In pop culture media, force fields are portrayed in a silly way. In Dune movies, personal force field armor was portrayed as a covering of all but impenetrable glowing cubes. In Star Trek, force fields are portrayed as almost impervious shell-type shields. And in Star Wars, is being manipulated by the mind. Really? Let's think of two objects in space that attract each other. If there is nothing between them, why would there be any diminishment with increased distance? Heidegger said nothing nothings. In other words, nothing isn't something that can do anything. So how is it intellectually responsible to posit distance in nothing as making any real difference? The lack of intellectual rigor in science regarding the nature of a force field appears right up front in the dictionary definitions. One such is that it is a computational method. Another is it's a map of force. Webster's Dictionary defines field as a special charm, aura, or spirit that can influence anyone in its presence then defines it redundantly as something resembling a force field. In contrast to these nebulous offerings, the electric universe paradigm defines a force field in concrete terms, something that can be easily visualized. This issue needs more clarity, which starts with better conceptions and more useful definitions. A great mistake consistently being made in science is the failure to recognize the existence of dipolar ether particles and their role in physical phenomena. Is not a force field a certain volume of dipolar ether particles that are affected electrically to stand ready to transmit one of the two forces, attraction or repulsion? upon any object that makes contact with them. Here is another question that should have been asked long ago. If there is no particle medium that supports a field, what is the material or concrete explanation? Not just the mathematical description for the drop-off of the field intensity in a field where the distance is increasing. Keep in mind two metaphysical principles. Number one, there is no such thing as nothing. It's just a mental construct. And two, real physical reality can always be visualized or portrayed. In other words, if it cannot be visualized, it isn't real. Given that we live in a material world of matter, and that the basic units of matter are what we call particles, physical science always includes dealing with units of matter or particles. Thus, we need to think of a force field as something tangible and not as something theoretical, mathematical, or non-material. However, when we feel a substance with our fingers, it is not the atomic matter that we feel, but it is the electric repulsive force from the material. Is this not a violation of what was just claimed? No. In the EU model, force is always transmitted by contact or across distance by branching chains of the ether particles in contact. Thus, in a field, the number of particles that distribute the force is increasing by the distance, the square of the distance or the square root of the distance. The force gets spread over more particles and is diminished in intensity. Anybody that has ever broken a rack with a cue ball in a game of pool or billiards knows that. 
We know there are two overarching realms of reality. The physical, which is the realm of tangible substance, material things, body, brain, flesh, and the sensory equipment, etc. This is the domain of science. Then there is the greater spiritual realm, which is the realm of mind, spirit, meaning, creativity, artistry, and all the other non-material aspects like mathematics and logic. This is the domain of philosophy and its subset theology. In the EU, we start with basics or fundamentals, which include particles, charge, and force. Let us remember that mass and matter are not the same thing. The current thinking is that there are two kinds of particles or packets that can be filled to various levels with mass slash energy. Two types of charge, positive and negative, and two kinds of force, attraction and repulsion. The developments that we find in the physical universe are built on this tripartite foundation. And along with motion, spatial dimension, size, shape, and structure, account for what we see or find in the material realm. Electricity, magnetism, and gravity are secondary aspects or phenomena and are always associated with a field. Simply, particles can carry mass energy, charge, and dipolarity. A magnetic field is always produced by charged particles in motion, even in permanent magnets. An electric current is always charged particles flowing or transmitting charge. On the other hand, in the EU paradigm, a gravitational field is produced by all particles because they all have some dipolarity. Therefore, in the EU thinking, a field is not just a mystical or mathematical construct, but really designates a specific volume of matter, including neutrinos, quote, carrying or supporting the field. These have a force effect through increasingly branching chains of contact upon other material objects or particles of matter. This is very simple and straightforward, easy to visualize or imagine. Another question is this. Given that physical science deals with material, hasn't there been far too much phenomenological or mystical thinking that has crept in the back door of physics theory? Without a medium of ether to carry the field, some theoreticians get so discouraged that they want to do away with the whole concept of a field, dismiss it entirely. While Thornhill agrees with the premise, quote, that the ether in the form of normal matter, that is neutrinos, can be regarded as the polarizable dielectric substrate that transfers the direct electric force, which includes magnetism and gravity, and also the slower transverse electrical disturbance of electromagnetic waves. Just consider the two cases whereby the field intensity falls off by the distance or by the square of the distance in a radial field. This is simply because the number of ether particles in contact carrying the force gets increased and the intensity gets spread out or diluted by the increasing number of the particle chain branches carrying the field out to that distance. Nothing mystical here at all. These two formulas involving the distance or its square are mathematically simplified or idealized. The true calculation for any specific case in the real world of even just two bodies would be hopelessly complicated. Therefore, practically a field consists of a certain volume and somewhat quantifiable number of neutrino ether matter particles surrounding the field generator where the force of the field 
is still detectable by contact with the remote particles. 